Welcome to worship today. And if you missed Wes playing, you can go back and see it and, and hear the hymns played that we often sing in church. I also want to uh, welcome anyone who's coming on, whether they're from uh, our church, any church or anywhere, friends, relatives. It's great to have everyone coming on. It, it uh, is another way that we're doing church and it's great to be together. And as we begin, I, I do want to take a moment of silence for us to pause to remember the loss of lives this past week in Nova Scotia, that it was a horrendous event and grief unbelievable for the people and their families and in Nova Scotia and for all of Canada. So as we begin, we light a candle and pause for a moment to reflect and pray for those who grieve. And as we continue our service, I, I want to introduce Rita. Many of you will know her, some will not. And you may or may not know that Rita is um, part of the Lay Leadership Worship Program and with the United Church of Canada. And she is going to be um, facilitating worship today in the liturgy. She's written the liturgy. She is also, as part of her course, needs to participate. So she's participating with us. So please bear with us. Um, there may be some glitches along the way. Um, we have no, Reverend Noel Bowles is uh, the coordinator, the director. So she's bringing us in and out. And uh, so she will be there. Wes is playing. Um, we're also going to have Derek Morphy and Marthy, Marthy, Martha Graham, um, who will be accompanying um, Derek as he has a solo. Um, and we, um, Evan Demaduke will be reading scripture for us today. So come and be a part of our worship today as we continue to be the church from our house to your house and in your house. So come and be a part of our worship today. Grab a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, a glass of water, sit in a comfortable chair, take a deep breath, center yourselves and simply relax. We gather today to rejoice in the creation of the world. God lovingly shows the infinite compassion, formed our planet and all that live within it. <clears throat> it has been five years since we became an affirming ministry of the United Church of Canada. Our celebration this year coincides with Day of Pink, which was on April 8th, a day which we unite with the world to celebrate diversity and race awareness to stop all types of bullying and Earth Day, which was April 22nd, and today we're going to celebrate both. As we come together to center ourselves, I also want to remind us, for those who may or may not know, that this past week, uh, a dear member of our congregation, Mary Campbell, passed away. Please remember her family in your prayers this week. We gather today as one community, a community of people, each in our own homes, worshiping together as the church. We gather today as a community of faith, affirming our oneness with God's creation and with each other. As we light our candles this morning, our response is, thank you, God. We'd like to join us in this during the lighting. Light the Christ candle to celebrate the birth and resurrection of Jesus, who gives us the light of hope, unrelenting and inexplicable. Gives us peace, strong and unafraid. Gives us the light of joy, persistent and unpredictable. Who gives us the light of light, hot and holy, the light that shines in the darkness. Thank you, God. The rainbow is a sign of diversity and hope. 
a reminder of the covenant made between God and humanity. Red is the color of strawberry and rose petals, passion and birth, sweet and vivacious, color of life. Thank you, God. Orange is the color of pumpkin and, pl and flame, warmth and compassion, bright and enlivening. Thank you, God. Yellow is the color of lemon and sun, joy and enthusiasm, radiant and bold, color of hope. Thank you, God. Green is the color of the inchworm and, and the pine, calm and growth, restful and abundant, color of nature. We like the green candle. Our response, thank you, God. Blue is the color of sky and mountain ridge, depth and inspiration, soaring and fluid, color of harmony. We light the blue candle. Thank you, God. <clears throat> Purple is the color of grape and lilac, strength and dignity, profound and majestic, the color of spirit. We light the purple candle. Thank you, God. We're now going to hear a music selection called Beyond the Rainbow, or as some know it as We Are Rainbow. Our choir sung it last year, and it is a beautiful piece that was written by David Cave. So we are hearing that this morning. Oh, yeah. 
We are going to pray the four directions, which is a gift from our indigenous brothers and sisters. I ask you to stand with me and face to the west. Excuse my back. To the west, the sun sets and the day ends. For this reason, west signifies the end of life. The great thunderbird lives in the west and sends thunder and rain from its direction. For this reason, the West is also the source of water, rain, lakes, streams, and rivers. Now please face to the North. North brings the cold, harsh winds of the winter season. These winds are cleansing. They cause the leaves to fall to the earth to rest under a blanket of snow. This direction stands for hardships and discomfort. If anyone has the ability to face these harsh winds, they have learned patience and endurance. Therefore, North represents the trials people must endure and the cleansing they must undergo. Would you now face to the East? The direction from which the sun comes. The light dawns in the morning and spreads over the earth. It is a beginning of a new day. It is also the beginning of understanding because light helps us see things the way they really are. It is also the beginning of understanding for the wisdom of helping people live good lives. It helps us see the things. People rise in the morning to pray, face, to pray facing the dawn, asking God for wisdom and understanding. Our last direction is to the south. This is when the sun is at its highest point. This direction stands for warmth and growing. The sun's rays are powerful in drawing life from the earth. There is a saying that the life of all things come from the south. Warm and pleasant winds come from the south. Belief is that when people pass into the spirit world, they travel the Milky Way's path back to the south, returning from where they came. We light a candle for Earth, our mother and grandmother from whom we receive our nourishment. It represents all growing in this world. Good morning, everyone. As the theme of this morning's service is creation, accompanied by Martha, I'm going to sing a recitative from Joseph Haydn's oratorio, The Creation. This describes the sixth day when God created the animals. Haydn introduces each animal with a short piano introduction, which mirrors how the animal moves or behaves. It's quite brilliant, even amusing. And God said, let the earth bring forth a living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind. Fertile womb, the earth obeyed the word and teemed 
creatures numberless, in perfect form and fully grown. Cheerful roaring stands the tawny lion. With sudden leap, the flexible tiger appears. The nimble stag bears up his branching head. It's our special time of the service today. We are having our children's time. And so any kids pretend you're, you know, sitting around the computer. Well, you will, won't be pretending. You will be. So come sit around and then you can gather in because I want to show you some things. We're going to think about spring. Now, what are some of the signs of spring? Now, if you look in my backyard last week, there was snow. This week, there isn't snow, which I am very thankful for. The sun is shining today. It's nice and warm. And getting up there will probably be shorts and t-shirts by this afternoon. And what else is out there that you might see that reminds us of spring? The robins. Anyone seen robins? I have. What about um, buds on the tree? When I was outside the other day, I noticed some trees were budding. And this one fell in the ground. And so I picked it up to show you that trees are beginning to bud. Anybody see any butterflies? Might be a little early for butterflies, but uh, the children made these one year and we used them in worship. And what about birds? Anyone seen any birds chirping? And I have a special bird with me today that will actually make the noise. Now it's a bird and you put the water in it and then you blow on it and it makes the sound of a bird. And so spring is here. Creation is here. And we want to be thankful for all God's wonderful gifts of the creation that we have been given. And so let's pause and thank God for the wonderful gift of creation and how we can enjoy this springtime. Let's pray. God, we thank you that we can come together 
that we are here together as a church in our homes. Be with us as we remember creation and your wonderful gift that we may be thankful for all the beauty that spring brings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And Evan is going to read for us the creation story. In the beginning, God made heaven and earth. God made it all. At first, there were no people, no animals, no light, nothing. It was dark and empty. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. God separated the light from the darkness and called it day. The darkness God called night. So there was day and night. God did this all in one day. The next day, God poured water into the sea. God blew air and clouds into the sky. Now there was water and air. God did this on day two. On day three, God was very busy. God gathered, gathered up the water so that land appeared. God had made oceans and lakes, waterfalls and rivers. God made dry land hills and plains and valleys. Then God said, let the earth be green and grass and flowers and tall trees sprang up. So many kinds that no one could count them. And God said, it is all good. On day four, God said, let there be lights in the sky. They will divide time into days and months and years. So God put the sun in the sky. God saw that night was very dark. So God put the moon and the stars in the sky. That night, they came out for the very first time. God said, it is all good. On day five, God filled the sea with fish. God made starfish, eels, whales, and turtles. Fast little fish for the rivers and big floppy fish for the oceans. And God filled the sky with birds. Great eagles, skimming hummingbirds, and squawking parrots. And God said, it is all good. On day six, God said, now let there be life on earth. So God made the animals, cows, horses, turtles, and bears. So God made the first peoples, Adam and Eve. God made them to be friends. Look after the fish, the birds, and all the other creatures, God told them. God saw everything that was created. It was all just right. Then on day seven, God rested. No more creating. And that's how God created the heavens and the earth. God put Adam and Eve in a beautiful garden called Eden. Give names to the animals that have been created. What fun they had making up names. Alligators and caterpillars, elephants and tortoises, squirrels and porpoises. Enjoy yourselves, God told Adam and Eve, and it was good. Let us pray. May we be a rainbow people joining with God in living the promise of a new creation being born through us. For whose breath gives life to the world and whose voice is heard in the soft breeze, come to us with your strength and wisdom. Come to us and among us. Come as the wind and cleanse us. We join with you, our creator, creation, and all creatures. In grace and gratitude, we pray. Amen. It might be kind of hard to celebrate today uh, amidst all that's happened this past week. It truly was the unthinkable. And as more of the story comes out and fingers are pointed and people are blamed, comments what could have, should have, might have been are all out there. The reality is there is pain, there is suffering, there is questions, there is grief. And the unthinkable, even unimaginable, suffering, not just for the families involved, the RCMP, the province of Canada, this, the country of Canada, the province of Nova Scotia. We all are grieving. The world grieves with us. And yet, amidst this suffering, we have this reading about creation. It's the creation story, the beginning of order the beginning of ordered time, and maybe, just maybe, it will bring us comfort in knowing that it was the first 
human divine partnership that began in creation. And we may wonder today if we have evolved in some ways, given what happened last week in Nova Scotia and what's happening in our world and with COVID-19, what went wrong? I want you to sit for a moment, relax and close your eyes if you like, and imagine for a moment that there's nothing. And as, as I said, close your eyes if it helps. Sit somewhere comfortable, relax. Imagine nothing, absolutely nothing. Try to turn off your mind. Simply let things go. Imagine now the water appearing, the sky, the beautiful sky, the creatures both on land and in the air and in the water. Imagine the warmth of the sunshine that is on your face. Imagine the cool air of night. And in the darkness, the stars are shining and the moon is so bright. Imagine that all of creation is there. After you pause for a moment, open your eyes and come back. Or if you want to just drift off and stay there, feel free to do that. But this is the creative power of our God. That is the story of creation. God hovers over the earth. And it is the earth that celebrates our God, even bears witness to God because it is God who calls forth life out of nothing, out of water, out of darkness. God is breath and spirit hovering over the space, moving deliberately, blowing over the water space. The heavens and the earth hear God's voice. God orders everything in place and creates everything. God calls forth every creature and creation is the very expression of God. And God's call invites creation to come forth from absolutely nothing. Let there be light, and there was light. Let us make, and it was made. These are expressions of God in community with what is becoming. God's word fills the sea with light and darkness, with the separation of the waters, and with the creatures that crawl and creep and fly and walk on all fours. The animals and humans, the two-legged and four-legged, are walking about. Create it. And we are created in God's image, created in our image, spirit, word, and God. God partners with creation. There is creative power beyond our wildest belief. Humankind is created in God's image in love, for love, and to care for creation, the creatures, and each other. In this, at times we fail miserably, as what happened in Nova Scotia. Imagine we were made in the image of God. We reflect the divine. Sometimes our behavior says otherwise. But we are God's agents commissioned in our world to care for what God has made, to be good stewards of all of God's creation and all that God has created. We are to grieve when those who suffer grieve. We are to be there. We are to give to those who are in need and to show the way to those who may need to see the way. It is the very goodness of God that we are called to celebrate, to model, and to live. We are called to share that responsibility with God, not to have dominion over, but to nurture and care for the earth and to develop the earth and as, as its humans and creatures we are to bring about the greatest potential. We are called to be the hands and feet of Christ in a world that is in so much need of seeing the light, in the spirit, in the breath of God that moves over the deep. It is the word of God that calls us forth, that declares good. And when it's hard to see, we need to help the world, the hurting world, find it. Here is the spirit and breath of God moving over the deep. Here is the word of God 
calling forth, declaring goodness. Here is the creating God, sharing power with humanity, relating to all of creation. And here is God dancing, a Trinitarian dance, Father, Mother, Son, and Holy Spirit. And then like God, we are called to be in our world to help, to show others the way, and sometimes to just be, and sometimes to just rest. In times like COVID-19 and the shootings in Nova Scotia, we are called to be with God in community, to cry with those who cry as God cries with them, to affirm the good in us and realize that sometimes, and more than we like to admit, that the not so good, the evil seems to win out. Yet we affirm the good of God in each of us, and we know that in our worst days, and even amid COVID-19 and the shootings in Nova Scotia, we are not alone, for God is with us. The God of creation walks with us in our suffering, in our joys and in our loss, in our grieving and in our celebrating. Today, amidst the tears we celebrate creation, we affirm and celebrate our affirming journey, and we celebrate the God of humankind is in the midst of celebrations and cries for those who grieve. And we too cry for those who grieve and walk with them as God walks with us in our journey of life, in our journey of grief, in our journey of celebration. God journeys with us in COVID-19 and in the grief of a nation over the shooting, the worst shootings in our history. God, we need you more than ever in a world that seems to need your light more than ever. Walk with us, be close to us, journey with us, take us by the hand and in those times even carry us. And let us be the hands and the feet of Christ wherever we go. For the world is in need of a God whose light shines forth in all of God's creatures, creation, and in all of us who call ourselves followers of Christ. Be the hands and feet of Christ and journey with God who journeys with us. In these days of COVID, in these days of grief with Nova Scotia, be with us. Thank you, God, for being the God of creation and the God of the good, the bad, and the indifferent. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus Christ, you traveled through towns and villages curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid now in the midst of the global spread of the coronavirus that we may experience your healing love. Be with those who are sick with the virus. May they regain their strength and health through quality, quality medical care. Be with those who have died from the virus. May they be at rest with you in your eternal peace. Be with the families of those who are sick or have died. As they worry and grieve, defend them from illness and despair. May they know your peace. Be with the doctors, nurses, researchers, and all medical professionals who seek to heal and help those affected and who put themselves at risk in the process. May they know your protection and peace. Be with the leaders of all nations and our frontline workers who are meant to serve. Heal us from our fear, which prevents nations from working together and neighbors from helping one another. Heal us from our pride, which can make us claim invulnerability to a disease that knows no borders. Jesus Christ, healer of all, stay by our side in this time of uncertainty and sorrow. Open our hearts to all humanity as we pray for all those who are struggling in mind, body, and spirit. We especially pray for the people of Nova Scotia as family and community grieve over the loss of friends and loved ones in this horrific shooting and set fires this past week. We also pray for the family of Mary Campbell, who left us to be by your side. May your comfort give them peace. We ask you to be with Angeli Dufresne, mother of Cecile, who is in hospital. 
be with her and give her comfort and strength through medical procedures. Be with Cecile and her sisters as they sit with their mother to ease her anxieties and keep her calm. They need your guidance and strength. We pray for those within our church community and all those that we silently name. God of all people, bless the spirit of love, life and wisdom and peace that empowers us to move forward each day. Fill our hearts with strength and purpose to live each day with gratefulness. Let our love be patient, kind and hopeful. The evidence of our faith in God who has taught us to pray our Father and Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord, creator of all living things, help us guide our actions and thoughts to become better stewards of the earth. Let us go out into the world to show our colors of diversity, pain, and joy. Let us go out into the world knowing that wherever we go, the Holy One calls us there. Let us go into the world being touched by the grace of God. Let us go knowing we are all unconditionally and deeply loved. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Go as God's people, affirming our diversity and our interconnectedness. Go as God's people, affirming God's creation and all the creatures and creator of our world. Remember to social distance, stay at home, and be safe. God bless.